Hello, today we're going to take a look at how we can help our students organize their Google Drive. Just as a friendly reminder, I'm at Adina on Mondays, Wednesdays, and alternating Fridays, and at Union on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and alternating Fridays. And then I have my cell number as well. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, you can text or call, whatever is most convenient for you. If you run into a glitch of any kind or you just want to talk through something, um, please feel free, even if it's not the day that I'm scheduled to be in your building. I am happy to help you, and my job is to support you. So please reach out anytime you need me. So anytime that I am working on something, I like to ask myself the why. Like, why is this important? Why is this something that I might want to invest any time in? So when it comes to helping students organizing their Google Drive, the why for me is that it helps students organize their work more efficiently. It enables them to find their work quickly, to continue to work on it, or it makes turning in their assignments easier. It saves time for me as the teacher, it helps save time for the student, and it can also help prevent frustration when you have a student who knows that they were working on something, but they just can't seem to locate it. On the left hand side, you see a picture of what a lot of people's Google Drives look like, just a giant list of documents. Some are PDFs, some are docs, it's just all kind of a mismatch. What we're going for is something that's organized into folders. Something to keep in mind is that this time that we're spending now, this helping students organize their Google Drive now, it'll help them whether we're face to face or we're remote and it'll help the students in the future because the Google Drive that they have now through Lakota will be their Google Drive all the way up through their senior year of high school. So because of that, us, you know, at 3-6, we want to make sure that it's organized now so it doesn't become bigger and bigger and more and more of an overwhelming task to organize it later on. So, and just think about this. We help students organize their school supplies at the beginning of the year, like notebooks and folders. Helping them organize their Google Drive should just be a part of that beginning of the year startup. It's really just the same thing. So where to start? So, and I know this is something that teachers sometimes struggle with even too. So listen up and see if this is you. So where to start? Shared with me. So in your Google Drive, you've got a section called My Drive and a section called Shared With Me. And sometimes people get bogged down trying to organize the shared with me portion of the drive. Don't do that. Shared with me is like your mailbox at home. Anybody can share whatever they want with you and it's going to appear in your shared with me. Even stuff you don't ask for. So just like your mailbox, you can decide what is junk and what you want to keep. Anything you don't want, anything that somebody shares with you and you're like, I really don't want that. You can either just leave it in your shared with me or you can trash it. Either way, shared with me is just a giant collection bin of things that people put in there. But again, you decide what you want to keep. If there's something you're like, you know what, I'm going to use that or I want to keep that in a place that's going to be convenient for me and I want it. Anything you want to keep, you just move it to your drive and you organize it there. So to get started with your students at the beginning of the year, you kind of first need to decide how much time you want to spend doing this. Now, if you're teaching third grade, this may not be an overwhelming task because they may not have ever used their Google Drive or it might not have been used frequently in the past. So it might not take very long to organize it. If you're teaching sixth grade and you have a sixth grader who has never organized their Google Drive, then yes, you're talking about something that's going to be more time intensive. So as the teacher, you decide, you know, which way you think would be best to go. OK, so two choices at the beginning year that I personally would use. I would either make one folder in their Google Drive called archive or past work and then everything that they've done up to they came to me could go in there. This is the best option if you're under a time constraint. This is also good to know that students can still access the work that's in there, but because it's still going to be kind of jumbled up in that archive folder, they may need to use the Google Drive search engine to locate it a little bit more quickly. OK, the other option that you have is to take the time for kids to organize it. OK, and then that would be helping students organize their past work either by grade level or you could have by subject. 
and then the student can access the past work just looking at the named folder. So getting started, I would take a look at what their Google Drive looks like first and help them either dump everything in a past work folder or organize that past work by grade level or by subjects that they've had in the past. Once I get that Google Drive cleaned up, then it's time for me to get that student ready and organized for this year in my class. And to do that, you need to ask yourself, how organized exactly do you want to get? Do you want just to have folders for each subject? Just like you have paper folders, you can have digital folders. Do you want to color code the folders? Or do you want to take it to the third level and put emojis in front of the names on the folders as well? Okay. I know my husband teaches fifth grade and he looked at this and he goes, well, yeah, that's cute, but what's kind of the point? And I explained to him, I said, well, color coding things and adding visuals, especially for the littler learners, can be very helpful. And I would argue that even some of the older kids seeing these icons may help them to find it too, especially if the class comes up with a set icon, like the globe is always for social studies, then I think that might help trigger in their minds every time I look for the blue globe, I'm blue social studies and I'm good to go. Really, it's about helping them to be able to find their work more efficiently and quickly. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little type A, don't know about you, but I do like things to be very organized, at least color coded. And then if, like I said, if you want to add the emojis, you know your learners, um, you can totally do that as well. Totally up to you. So here we have the steps to create folders by subject, which is kind of that layer number one. And so in a student's Google Drive, they're just going to click new folder and they're going to name it. You might want to name it third grade science, fourth grade science, or you just might want to make it science. It doesn't matter because at the end of the year, the cool thing is you can take all their folders that they did with you for your grade level and you can put them in one folder at the end of the year so that anytime they want to look back at work that they did at your grade, they'll have one folder at the end of the year. And I'll show you how to do that um, at the end of the year to kind of close up shop with your Google Drive. That makes it nice, though, for students to have kind of a portfolio of everything they did um, at one grade level. But to create it by subject at the beginning of the year, again, it's just going to their Google Drive in my drive, not the shared with me, my drive, new folder, and then naming it, and then clicking create. And that's it. That's how they get a folder. And I would have them do that for every subject that I wanted them to have a folder for. If you want to take some time and have them color code, then you can have them go to, they click on, they right click their folder, <clears throat> excuse me, change the color, and then they can pick what color they want. Now, totally up to you, but another thing that I have done is I have had the kids then make the color in their Canvas course. That color tile can be changed as well, and I've had them match that color tile to whatever the color is of their Google folder. So for example, if social studies is blue, then I can have a blue social studies for the Canvas course too. So if you don't know how to do that, just let me know and I'm happy to help you. But again, just trying to make things consistent and organized for students. And then if you are interested in um, having adding emojis to the front, you click, right click here, rename, and then you can put the icons or the emojis in front of, behind, wherever you want. So just right click, rename, and then you can put the emoji where you want. Now, Chromebooks do have an emoji keyboard that's located on them. I will tell you, sometimes it's easy to find and other times it's actually a little bit of a process to get it. It just kind of depends on the way your Chromebook is set up. Um, if you're interested in knowing where that Chrome, the um, emoji keyboard is on a Chromebook, just let me know and I will send you the steps for that. But another easy way to do it is to go to getemoji.com. It's very easy to copy and paste. Um, you can just go in there. You can search in the search bar. I want a book. I want a calculator. I want a science test tube, whatever you want. And then you just copy and paste that in the name. So whatever you find is easiest to do with your students, um, that's what I would do. OK, now students also have a choice and it just depends on preference. But um, there isn't really like a right or wrong. It really is just what the learner prefers. 
but you can change the view. This is considered a grid view of folders, and this is how personally I like to organize mine, and this is actually my Google Drive here. And then this is the same Google Drive over here, but I just click this button, and it changed it to list form, okay? Now, when you've put icons, it does put it up at the top. So this one has a little light bulb, and so that why, that's why it's at the top. Then it goes to number, and then it goes into ABC order. So that's something to keep in mind, too, when you're naming them. The things with your um, icons or emojis are going to go to the top, which for students is, tends to be helpful. Um, also, you can put like an asterisk or a hashtag in front of a name, and that will pop it up to the top, too. That's nice to know when you're having students work on projects. If you want like a separate project just to pop up to the top, either um, in grid or list view, putting an icon or a hashtag or some kind of special character in the front will make it pop to the top of that grid or that list. Here I have um, some resources for you. I have that Get Emoji website. Um, there's an article here about organizing Google Drive, 13 tips to organize your Google Drive. We talked about the three, about subject folders, color coding, and adding emojis to the names. Um, but there are additional ways you can do it too. I think in elementary, focusing on those three um, and then maybe adding the part where they color code their Canvas course to match is it would you know meet the needs of our elementary learners. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, I am having follow-up sessions for this session on um, Thursday from 8 to 9 a.m. at Adena, and that is in the hub, and then at the hub at Union on Friday from 9 to 10. So if you want to join me there, be ready for with any questions that you might have about organizing Google Drives, um, or if you just want to come and you know practice doing some things, knowing that I'm going to be there to kind of support you, that's totally fine too. So I look forward to working with you on organizing your Google Drive um, and helping your students to be organized as well.